Hello everyone, today we have a little bit of a different lesion for you today. Um, what I have in front of me here is actually a liver biopsy that was taken in a patient with a somewhat interesting history of an apocrine lesion. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about invasive apocrine carcinomas, apocrine DCIS, um, but let's just drive around and, and talk a little bit about what we're seeing here. So what you see Im almost immediately with this is we have these in intensely eosinophilic nests of cells. Uh, let's get into focus maybe. Focus is always good. So we have these large uh, polygonal cells, uh, somewhat vacuolated cytoplasm, and the the nuclei tend to have uh, fairly round contours. There, there's a little bit of irregularity there, and even at 10x, which is where we are now, we can start to see some nucleoli. They're not super prominent, but they are in our field, so we are going to pay attention to them. Um, so when when do we tend to see these lesions? Well, they uh, occur in about 1 to 4 percent depending on the source, but I'd say probably around 1 percent of uh, invasive cancers, and um, they have a wide range of age groups. So you can see them in someone who's 20, you can see them in someone who's 90, um, but generally you're going to see these in postmenopausal women. Just a bit of a, a close-up view, so you can really appreciate uh, the the macronucleoli, macronucleoli. <laughs> uh, the the slight or very fine vacuolization of the cytoplasm, maybe not as granular as we would necessarily expect. Um, and although we can tell there's um, individual cells, maybe we would like things to be a, a little clearer in um, in definition, more crisp cell outlines, which is what we normally see in these lesions, then this could be a caveat because this is a metastatic lesion. So that's something to keep in, in mind in the back of your head. Um, but anyway, going back to our, our clinical stuff, these tend to be unilateral lesions in the breast, very rarely bilateral. Again, as with most breast lesions, rarely seen in men. Um, and they don't have any symptoms or features that really tell you this is an apocrine lesion versus um, any other type of conventional breast carcinoma. Um, so grossly, you're not going to see anything different. They can be hard, they can be fleshy, they can be well circumscribed, poorly circumscribed. All the, the range of features that we see in our other breast carcinomas are things that you can see with this, okay? So there's, there's nothing that's going to pop out at you there. Um, if we're going back to our histology, since we talked about a lot of it, um, if you were to compare this to other apocrine lesions, the nuclei are, are larger than other apocrine, um, like apocrine metaplasia tends to have small round nuclei. Um, and what's interesting about these is that when you have very large, uh, dark, uh, like hypochromatic nuclei, those actually favor more low grade features, whereas the high grade could be, uh, maybe they have multiple uh, weird shaped um, um, nucleoli, which would be very large, so like a macronucleoli, or they could have like that smudgy chromatin that we tend to see in a lot of uh, like heme path lesions. Uh, so those are things that you, you can see, so just a wide range of things. They they often will have binucleation, uh, so don't let that scare you. Oh, we might have one here. Let's take a closer look and see if we actually do. Oh, uh, maybe. Let's see if I can get that in the center. Yeah, technical difficulties today. Okay, so I almost have it center, but that might be a binucleated cell. Um, uh, often, as I uh, mentioned before, uh, these lesions will usually have very distinct 
uh, cell borders, but not necessarily in this case. Um, and one of the other features you might be able to appreciate in this lesion and, and in this focus uh, is that sometimes they can have this fairly faint light blue or mucoid appearance. Um, I'm appreciating it more towards the bottom of this view uh, where we can see maybe there's a little bit of, of uh, mucinous features or, or mixoid quality to the cytoplasm. Uh, this is metastatic, so we're not going to see uh, the lymphocytic infiltrates that you are often will see in the breast. Uh, so this can be either purely lymphocytic or it can be lymphoplasmocytic. Um, which always complicates things, right, when we're looking at is this an invasive lesion, is it not? Um, as far as do they form tubules, are they sheets, these tend to have uh, closer to poorly differentiation where you might have some small nests or, or cording, um, but one of the um, caveats to this and, and one of the differentials is are you actually looking at, um, like, an, an interlobular lesion? Are we looking at maybe like uh, when we've seen things like our invasive lobular carcinomas with histiocytoid features? Um, because sometimes these lesions can look more histiocytoid than they do apocrine. Um, so they just tend to be great mimickers of a lot of things. Uh, and I, I do remember that when I saw this biopsy, I, w I was on the liver rotation. And uh, so one of the things we were thinking about is, well, this doesn't look like liver, but is it a, a GI thing? Is it a pancreatic thing? Uh, so these these really tend to mimic a lot of different lesions, and that's where your stains will really be beneficial to you. Um, these are classically ERPR negative. However, they are androgen receptor positive, AR positive. Uh, your GCD FP15 will be positive. Mammoglobin will be positive. GATA3 will be positive, but as we know, GATA3 tends to stain a lot of things, so never hinge your differential on just the GATA3. Always have something else to help back you up with that. Um, they uh, will tend to stain for pretty much any cytokeratin you want to throw at it. Uh, so, you know, if you like CK7, maybe you're thinking, is this uh, a renal cell carcinoma, like a clear cell carcinoma? Here, we got a little more pleomorphic nuclei look like. Some of them are a little bigger, a little wild. I'll go up to 20x so we can see a little more of the features. Oh, check out that mitotic figure. Okay. And here we go. We got some that... Oh. Okay, I really am challenged today. Okay. But... So in this field, now that I finally stopped, um, we can see that some of the nuclei have multiple uh, macronucleoli. They're relatively regularly shaped, which is fine, um, but just remember these are some of the things that we're looking for to help us figure out is this an apocrine carcinoma or an apocrine DCIS. Um, because if, if all you had was enough to say, hey, this is DCIS, but it, it's very eosinophilic, maybe the cytoplasm's granular or evacuated like this, um, you can see apocrine DCIS as well. And it, it again, is uncommon. Uh, other stains, um, so because of uh, when you're looking at is this... Um, histiocytic, maybe you're thinking, is, could this be like a granular cell tumor, which would be very difficult uh, to look at histologically and just based off of the morphology, based off of the H&E to say this is not an invasive apocrine carcinoma or an apocrine DCIS and this is actually a granular cell tumor, one of the stains that actually will help you is CD68. So CD68 should be positive in granular cell tumor. It will be negative in these apocrine lesions. Um, other things that you can think of is, is this maybe radiation effect that's, you know, um, causing some really weird atypia in an apocrine lesion. Um, we can think about is this maybe uh, representing like either a pagetoid spread or intralobular spread of, an, of a pre-existing carcinoma? Um, maybe if you had like a punch biopsy of the skin or something like that. And uh, one of the other things to consider 
would be just our oncoplastic or oncocytic neoplasms. Um, so with those, basically, when we're saying oncocytic neoplasm with these lesions, that is simply because you just don't have enough to say one way or the other, it's this, it's that. Um, so that that's when you would use that, where it, it doesn't really fit anything. Okay, so this is the h and &E. I'm going to show you guys a little bit of the IHC. So the first one I have up, we'll find the tissue. So this is your uh, estrogen receptor. So as we can appreciate, nothing is staining. You have that faint blush in the background. That's not real. Remember, it uh, ER should be a nuclear stain. Uh, so we got nothing. We're just going back down this core. Okay, so our ER's negative, so that's good. Next I have androgen receptor. So androgen receptor should be positive in these lesions. As we come up on the core, you can see just how beautiful that is. It's just very intense, strong, nuclear, and somewhat cytoplasmic. It's just it's staining everything, but not our background liver. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so knowing a lot about your stains really will help you figure out what you're looking at. Uh, I have GCDFP here, which is not as strong as the androgen receptor, but I think you can appreciate, as I get into focus, that we still have positivity. And this is a metastatic lesion, so we really want all these stains to help us figure out what we're looking at. So not all of it is positive, but there's enough here. So this would be enough to say that, uh, you know, you have scattered, moderate to strong uh, staining, but this, this is positive. This is enough to be positive, okay? And, of course, we have GATA. So this is GATA 3. And look at that, just like our AR. But it's a more crisp nuclear stain. But just staining everything in this lesion. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. Um, other stains that we did, so we did HER2, which I can show you. Um, her too is always a funny stain and probably something that I should focus on at one point going over some of the stains with you guys. Um, so what we see with her too is you have this very faint, almost wimpy wash in the background. So when it's this pale, like this, okay, this is staining. Let's just go up to this area that's kind of, um, but it, it's not very strong. It's not around all the cells. Um, and it's, it, like, it's not a, a complete, uh, stain around the, around the cells. It, um, HER2 is a, is a membranous stain. So we should have very strong, complete nuclear or, um, cell membranes. And so with this, I would call this a one plus, which is negative. So it's staining, but just basically it, it's not enough to call positive, okay? Uh, and then CDX2 we did because we were wondering about pancreas. And again, very similar to what we saw in ER. You can see our core starting to disappear. Let's get in focus. Uh, so the CDX2 negative, CDX2 would be positive in mucinous tumors. We like to use it for GI, but uh, really it doesn't differentiate uh, any mucinous tumors. So uh, that's also something else to keep in mind. Let's just go back to the H&E. 
genetics for these tumors. There's some areas that look a little more mucinous, so maybe from this you can appreciate a little more why we're considering um, a pancreatic adenocarcinoma in our differential. Um, so they can have a wide range of, of abnormalities genetically. They're not necessarily um, familial in origin, but you can have loss of heterozygosity. I'll just zoom in a little bit. Anyone who wants to take a look at that a little more. Um, you can see loss of 1P, loss of 16Q, 17Q, 22Q, or gains of 1P and gains of 2Q. Um, so very similar to a lot of our low-grade lesions, right? Um, you may see overexpression of ERBB2 or HER2. We don't have that in our case, but there are examples where they have positivity. Um, you can see amplification of 17Q12, um, but in the end, what does this all mean? Well, uh, the options are relatively going to be similar to what they would offer for any other triple negative breast cancer. Um, because of the e AR, the androgen receptor positivity, they could give them uh, anti-androgen therapy. Um, and as far as prognostics, it, it gets really sticky when you're looking at prognostic implications of these apocrine lesions. There are sources that say they do better than triple negative breast cancers at the same degree. Other sources that will say that they do worse. Um, honestly, there are probably more sources that say that generally they do worse. Um, but how much so, I, I think that's difficult to say. Um, Um, but that's kind of what I want to go over with you guys. Um, just an, an unusual lesion, and if you're on uh, liver pancreas like I was, um, still think about breast, right? Um, breast being uh, the most common thing you're going to see in, in female patients. Um, as far as metastatic lesions, like it should always be up there, kind of like how melanoma is always in your differential. Always consider breast lesions in women. Um, okay, and that's all I have for you today. So if you like this video, hit like. Uh, if you aren't subscribed already, hit subscribe. If you have comments for me, suggestions, things I miss, things uh, you think I should improve on, or even just topics that you'd want to see, uh, let me know in the comments. You can uh, follow me on Twitter. And thanks for listening, guys. Everyone have a good day. Stay safe out there.